Hello, my name is Nancy Roque, and I'm here today to offer you viewers a tutorial on Flickr, which is a photo sharing website. To fully understand Flickr, we're going to go through some of the basic information about it. Flickr was created in 2004 and bought by Yahoo in 2005. It is a dedicated photo hosting website that allows its users to create a profile and upload photos into albums that are then shared with the public. Users are also given a community through Flickr, as they can communicate with each other through discussions and comments. In 2014, a move was made to update Flickr so that it could rival other on-the-go photo applications, like Instagram, through updates that allowed for infinite scrolling and a more streamlined appearance. Since its creation, Flickr has gathered more than 87 million users, and there are approximately 3.5 million new photos uploaded each day by users. Since that update, users are also now given a free terabyte of space to upload in. Flickr differentiates itself from other social media and photo hosting websites in quite a few ways. Flickr has a feature known as the Commons, in which media that is within the public domain is accessible to everyone. Additionally, users are able to choose whether or not they want people to be able to post their media elsewhere, and under what circumstances this is to occur. Users are able to tag their photos in a similar way to other social media website tags, and this allows other users to be able to search a tag and find relevant images. Additionally, Flickr has a photo map option which allows users to see photos that were taken or uploaded from different areas around the world. Another interesting feature of Flickr is that it is almost a one-stop shop for users because they are also able to purchase wall art and photo books for their media. Before using Flickr and uploading images, it is important to note the user guidelines for Flickr. These guidelines are available on their website, but let's review. Flickr wants you to be polite and courteous to others. They also want you to be aware of other cultures as many people from around the world post to Flickr. Similarly, be aware of different age groups that are present and only upload content that you created. Flickr would also want you to moderate your own content and link back to Flickr when you post elsewhere. On the other hand, Flickr doesn't want you to upload anything that isn't yours. They want you to filter adult content and make sure that no nudity is available on cover photos or personal icons to maintain the safety of underage users. Also, please avoid uploading illegal material or violating copyrights, as both are against the rules of Flickr. And now, let's get to the tutorial of how to use Flickr. When you arrive at www.flickr.com, you will find yourself at a page similar to this. Please note that Flickr is available for public use, meaning you don't need to log in. However, in order to upload and interact with other users, you must create a username. At this point, you will need to either log in using a pre-existent Yahoo account or create a new one. Although Flickr used to allow different usernames and emails in order to register, a change was made after Yahoo purchased Flickr so that all users must log in with a Yahoo email account. Once you log in, you will see a home page that can be filled with photos and updates from accounts that you follow, similarly to a lot of other social media websites. This feature is new and comes from the many recent updates made in order to help Flickr compete with other photo hosting websites. You will also notice that the top bar allows users to navigate Flickr through different tabs that are linked to various actions and sections of the website. Following the U tab at the top, which takes you to your own user profile, the People tab, which is circled in red, allows you to see updates from people that you follow, find new friends, and even see photos of friends. This latest feature is similar to the tagged photo feature that is found on many social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram, so that friends can stay more connected. Additionally, the People tab is where you can manage your list of friends and remove feeds that you are no longer interested in. 
The Group tab is next, and it allows users to gain access to the community through a series of features. It is important to note that the Group page is currently in beta mode, as it is being updated from an old version. However, users can still access the old version, and the beta mode will likely not be much different from the new version that will be soon available. Through the Groups tab, users are able to join discussions that correlate with their interests, and they're able to find these groups through a search option that is available through the website. The Explore tab is next, and it allows users to discover their new favorites in a multitude of ways through different features that Flickr has honed in order to make their website a more complex experience for users. For example, Flickr users are given the opportunity to have the apps they've created featured in the App Garden for other users to download and use. Additionally, users can be featured on the weekly Flickr, which shows off the profile of different notable users each week. Similarly, the 20 under 20 page links users to notable profiles that are praised for their skills in photography, all while being under the age of 20. Users can also view the Flickr blog as a way to keep connected to the website, as different posts are created to update users on various ongoings, such as anniversaries of the websites or big milestones that have been reached. Users are also able to find profiles that they may like through the photo map feature. This feature is another unique aspect of Flickr, as other websites featuring photo maps only allow a per profile option to see where an individual has been posting from instead of a world view option that Flickr allows. The commons are an additional option given to users to find, as they say, the hidden treasures of the world's public photography archives and is open to everyone to view. You will note that between the Explore tab and the Upload tab is the Create tab. The Create tab is an option given to users to create their own artwork, such as canvases to hang in their homes or photo books to give as gifts to loved ones. However, we will next look at the Upload options given to users. The Upload screen will appear like this once you click on the Upload tab at the top of the screen. You will also note that users still have the option to revert to the old Uploader option as well. Once users click the Upload button, they can select what photos they want to upload at this point, and can hold the Control button on their computer keyboard to select specific images that are not near each other. As you can see here, I have chosen to skip certain photos to upload, and the photos that I have selected using the control button options are outlined in blue. As photos are uploading, you can make changes to their file names, tags, and descriptions so that other community members can find them through a search. Photos can also be added through a specific album within your profile or to a group that you are a member of. On this page, you can also select each photo individually to change the copyrights on each image and ensure that it remains reserved for your use only, or if you want it to be a part of the public domain, you can select that option as well. Following this, you may upload the batch of photos by agreeing to any changes you've made and selecting Upload. You can see an example of this at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Here, we can see what our user profile looks like once we finish uploading photos. It is broken down into a photo stream, which can infinitely scroll through the photos that you've uploaded. You can also see the albums and your favorites, as well as your creations, and you are also given an option to edit. Once a photo is uploaded, you can click on that photo to view it full sized. It is at this point where the edit option is available for photos, and the icon for editing appears at the furthermost left on the small band of icons at the bottom. Users can then select the Edit and Aviary option to begin editing their photo. In Aviary, users are able to select from a wide variety of edits to enhance their photos. For example, 
users can select different effects to use on their photos, which are similar to the filters used on other platforms. Filters have been made popular by websites such as Instagram and are now being added to Flickr. As you can see here, I have chosen a great filter to enhance this photo of my ferrets, as well as updating the contrast in order to suit my liking. Users are also able to add frames and stickers to personalize their photos, and users are also able to perform more standard edits, like fixing the contrast, brightness, warmth, and to crop the photo to their liking. Following these edits, all the user needs to do is hit save and the photo will be updated with its new edits to your user profile. Now that we have a basic handle of Flickr and how it works, let's review a few of the pros and cons of this website. On the pro side, Flickr is linked to other websites through the comments making it easy for people to access photos. Many photos are available for public use through this as well. The accounts are free and users get a terabyte of space to use. Flickr is user-friendly and includes basic editing tools through Aviary. A phone app is also available through new updates and community interaction is key and enjoyed by many users. On the other side, some of the downsides of Flickr are that all users must create a Yahoo account in order to use its services. Free accounts compress uploaded photos, and to avoid this, or to get more space, pro accounts cost about $24 a month or more depending on the option that you select. So, it is up to users to decide whether or not they wish to continue to use the service by weighing the pros and cons together. This will complete my tutorial of how to use Flickr. Thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned for the final reference slides following this.